America's greatest coat sale with tremendous savings on top name coats for women, men, and children. Plus sportswear, kids' clothes, and menswear at the lowest prices of the season now. Don't wait at these prices. They won't hang around long. Save now on coats and so much more during Burlington's once-a-year warehouse sale. Making ends meet at town meeting Thursday, January 30th at 7. Good morning. It is Thursday, January 23rd. I'm Harry Smith. Good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Lazan. <coughs> that is my name. Welcome to CBS This Morning. Choking everybody this morning, Los Angeles County cancels a controversial transportation contract that it was awarded to a Japanese company. Plus, from the Twin Cities, home of the Sunday Super Bowl, the latest craze rolls into the Metrodome. And spectacular ice sculptures highlight the St. Paul Winter Carnival. How much ice is that, Harry? I forget. It's a little lake when it melts. That's about it's, all it's, uh, well, they went out to uh, some of the clearest lakes in Minnesota. To, to harvest this ice. There are people who do this, that harvest the ice that have been doing it for generations. It was kind of a very special way you get the ice, and lots and lots of it was hauled to St. Paul for the Winter Carnival. And we'll tell you more about that a little bit later on this morning. Also coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to talk with Senator Edward Kennedy about the universal health care plan he is sponsoring in the Senate. Democrats call it Health America. Some Republicans call it bankrupt America. You want to hear any more about the ar ice harvest? No, I want to wait. I want to wait for a half hour. <laughs> That'll be coming up a little bit later on this morning and also later this morning. We're going to talk with Sybil Shepard, a triple threat in the new two TV movie Memphis. She not only stars, she is also the co-producer and co-writer and now our own triple threat, Mark McEwen. So do they have like uh, mules pulling the, the little uh, things behind to harvest for, that for ice? Harvesting harvesting yeah. Well, ice? there's an interesting thing, you know, because if there's too much snow, the ice isn't good to harvest. You need to get ice from a place where there isn't a lot of That's snow true. on top. And he's not going to have anything to talk about in a half hour. <laughs> he does the story. <laughs> Gave it all away. A lot of drinks to go with all that ice. Let's take a look at the weather map. A lot of rain in the east today. Ooh, there's going to be a lot of rain. And if you're heading to the Twin Cities, aren't you glad they play the game indoors? <laughs> the high today is going to be right around 20. We'll tell you about that and how sweet it is in the southwest coming up. Thanks, Mark. Right. Now it's time for the news this morning. The passion stirred up by the recession and the trade deficit with Japan are very much in evidence in Los Angeles this morning. Those passions put the brakes to a ma big mass transit project. Jerry Bowen has that story. Japan bashing and old-fashioned American protectionism went on display as Los Angeles County transportation officials reversed course and voted to kill a $120 million contract awarded just last month to a Japanese firm. Mayor Bradley. At the center of the controversy is the 23-mile Green Line light rail system. Sumitomo Corporation won the contract to build 41 automated rail cars over Morris & Knutson, the American firm, which actually had the lower bid, $5 million lower. But the issue became one of jobs, leaving America at a time when jobs are hard to come by. Unemployed aerospace engineer, Georgie Milan. If we can build a bomb that, that uh, has a computer in it that can go where we direct it, we can build a train that can do the same thing. Commuter advocate John Walsh. I'd like to point out that we love the Japanese people. We love their culture. They lost fair and square. They were not the lowest bidder. Sumitomo, take a hike. This is America. This is the world of fairness. Some Japanese Americans say the controversy has revealed a prejudice lingering since that World War II. Reminds me of going back to 1942 of my father and mother being removed, uh, that at age 15 I had to leave here also, leave my school. Transportation officials are now considering building a rail car factory to keep jobs in Southern California, or converting an automobile assembly plant General Motors plans to abandon this summer. The move may result in several thousand jobs for Southern California. It most certainly sends a signal that protectionism is part of the American political landscape this election year. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Los Angeles. Ray Grabinski has been chairman of the Los Angeles County Transportation Commission during this whole controversy. He joins us now from Los Angeles. Thanks for joining us, sir. My pleasure. From the time the contract was awarded, you heard Californians scream, you're taking jobs away from Americans, and then, of course, you had a lot of negative reaction to President Bush's trade mission. Ultimately, what killed the contract with Sumitomo? Well, I think it was timing. I think uh, it's time in America to reevaluate what and how we do business, not just here, but around the world. And we find ourselves uh, embroiled in the middle of that controversy. 
and if it allows us to change state and federal legislatures so that uh, the laws are tipped in favor of this country rather than against them, I think it's worth all the, all the trouble we've gone through. What about the charges you're hearing from some critics that this, in fact, reveals prejudice on the Commission's part? I don't think it's prejudice so much as the American public finally being fed up with uh, uh, the American worker being chewed up for the last 25 years. I think this is just a, an automatic response to a situation that's taken place over the last 25 years. If we don't get up off our, uh, our economic backsides in terms of the leadership in this country, things aren't going to get better. This is something that we thought would take five years to do in Los Angeles, and we've been blessed with being able to do it uh, this much sooner. We're not talking about local content now. We're talking about not just building railroad cars, but buses and the potential, per perhaps, for even an electric car here at, at some point in the future. If I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like you, you feel like you're setting a precedent now that, that would not allow you to award any foreign contracts in the future. Is that the case? Well, actually, there wasn't state and federal uh, laws that would allow us to go too much farther than we had. And while we've been criticized, uh, I think if everybody checked our records, we probably helped disadvantaged and women-owned businesses better than any commission anywhere in California. But uh, we've built this big, big bandwagon over the last four years, and now it's election time, and it's uh, real convenient for everybody to jump on that bandwagon. Ray Grabinski, we appreciate your joining us this morning. Thank you very much. In other news, the United States and Russia are holding talks that could lead to deep cuts in long-range nuclear missiles. Sources say the goal is a ban on land-based missiles with more than one warhead and a reduction in the number of missiles carried on American submarines. President Bush is expected to present the plan in his State of the Union address next Tuesday. Federal regulators are planning some big changes in the way the government sells treasury bonds. It's an effort to prevent another illegal bidding scandal like the one that rocked Solomon Brothers last summer. Among the proposals, the government would sell extra bonds if any one dealer tried to corner the market and drive up prices. Regulators also want to weaken the influence of the powerful brokers known as primary dealers. And the Treasury says it will step up automation of its bond auction system. Time to check the financial markets this morning. The dollar is steady against other major currencies. The Tokyo stock market closed with a small gain. The Nikkei index rose 46 and a half points, up almost one quarter of one percent. And Wall Street opens with the Dow Industrial Average just below 32.56 after climbing 32 points yesterday. Visitors to Minnesota's Twin Cities will be offered twin attractions this weekend. Only one of them is a Super Bowl. James Satori reports on a St. Paul tradition. Ice King and Royal Court paraded through the streets of St. Paul, kicking off the 106th Winter Carnival, the city's annual frolic in the freeze. To visitors, last night's 30-degree weather was brisk. Not so to hearty Minnesotans. It's spring, like spring. They gotta get used to this weather. Yeah. And it's warm right it's now. Warm. The festivities coincide with Super Bowl weekend in Minneapolis this year and include a tradition dating back to the carnival's beginnings, the construction of an ice palace, this one 16 stories high. Well, it just so happens that they decided to have the Super Bowl and we were already having the ice palace, so we thought, you know what the heck, we'll put them together and have a party. We don't build them very often in St. Paul, but when we do build them, we build them big, as you can see. And not from just any ice. 650-pound blocks were cut from one of Minnesota's clearest lakes and trucked to St. Paul's Harriet Island, where construction workers spent weeks turning 20,000 industrial ice cubes into a world record size castle with 12 towers. The cost? A cool million dollars. It is the largest ice structure ever conceived and built. The public isn't allowed inside, but it wasn't always that way. Back at the turn of the century, the first palaces had ornate hallways and rooms. This year, the only things inside are scaffolding and laser lights. And at the appointed time last night, the palace was bathed in electronic wizardry before a crowd of more than 100,000. A winter spectacle which may just soothe those Super Bowl fans who've come here longing for castles on the beach. James Satori, CBS News, St. Paul. Nine minutes past the hour, time to check in with Mark McHugh. And you know, Mark, if people stick around a little bit later on this morning, we're going to be hearing more about the construction of the Palace from Harry. Right, as a true New Yorker, I wonder 
How big are the apartments in that? Because <laughs> they're bigger than my apartment. And can, I know that. can you smell your neighbor's food? <laughs> also, I could all, when I lived in Chicago, you could always tell the people from Minnesota because in the middle of our coldest winter, they had sweaters on because they love the cold. 19 will be the high today in Minnesota. Good place to be. Super Bowl Sunday, CBS. 27 degrees will be the high today in uh, Rock Island, Illinois. The Rock Island Nine is a very good road. You're going to see a little, uh, a lot of lake effect snow through the Great Lakes today. South Bend will probably see some snow. Uh, Chicago will see some snow. Central New England and uh, the Mohawk Valley of uh, New York will probably see some freezing rain because uh, it, they've got some pockets of cold air up there. But up and down the East Coast, you're going to see lots of rain today. Yeah, yes, just about all up and down the East Coast. Uh, the precipitation will be falling in the form of rain. It's going to be moving from the south to the north. Down in Miami, they're going to have a lovely day before the thunderstorms get there. A high today of 81 degrees. Before the rain gets in, it's going to be real, real nice. Way up here, see if I can reach it. Yes, you're going to see some precipitation up across the northwest rain across uh, coastal sections and maybe little inland sections of Washington, maybe Oregon as well. And up in the mountains, you're going to see that come out as snow. Still fog in the middle of uh, uh, the California valleys. Mm -hmm. 74 would be the high today in Los Angeles. Little sound effect there. You get a little extra here. That's a quick look at the national forecast. Let's take a look at your weather. Cloudy skies today with a few snow flurries out there. Temperatures will be falling throughout the day as we see very gusty northwesterly winds of around 20 to 35 miles an hour. 20s north this morning, 30s across the south are high in Des Moines, set this morning at around 33. That's the national forecast. Wake up call next time. Harry? Thanks, Mark. In his State of the Union address next week, President Bush is promising a major new proposal on one of the hot issues of the 92 campaign, health care. The Democrats' own plan, called Health America, was approved yesterday by a Senate committee. Its sponsor, Massachusetts Senator Edward Kennedy, joins us this morning from Washington. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Harry. Let's talk a little bit about this. It uh, passed an important committee yesterday, but a lot of people are, are really unfamiliar with this whole idea of pay or play or play or pay. Explain it. Well, first of all, uh, Harry, uh, every family that is watching your program uh, this morning has seen a dramatic increase in terms of uh, hospital bills, doctor's bills, premiums that they pay on health insurance. Every family here knows that there's a real 